Hello and welcome to the DSR Daily. I am your host for today, Riley Fessler, joined by Minna Stein. How are you doing, Minna? I'm well. How are you? Good. It's Halloween, one of the best holidays. I used to love Halloween. Not as much anymore. I don't dress up as, I don't go as all out in my costumes Mm -hmm. as I used to. Do you have any fun Halloween plans, Minna? Yeah, it's my dad's birthday, so I'm going home to spend it with him. It's my friend's Ryan's birthday. Happy birthday, Ryan, if you're listening. And happy birthday, Mr. Stein. (laughs) We love our Halloween birthdays. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and get us started with our first story. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner has filed a lawsuit to stop Elon Musk's $1 million a day giveaway targeting registered voters in key swing states ahead of the November 5th presidential election. Krasner alleges that Musk's giveaway, backed by his political group America PAC, is an illegal lottery scheme intended to sway voters with the promise of daily prizes for petition signers supporting free speech and gun rights. The giveaway aimed at voters in swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Arizona has already seen $1 million awarded at a rally. The lawsuit, set to be heard on Thursday by Judge Angelo Foglietta, argues that the giveaway contravenes state-run lottery laws and consumer protections, and federal authorities have also issued warnings. Yeah, this just seemed illegal. (laughs) Like, I don't, this didn't even pass the sniff test of legality. Um, So, I mean, Elon Musk is an idiot, so I'm not, like, surprised that he would try something like this. Um, mm-hmm. but hopefully they shut it down quick because it's just ridiculous. It's a clown show. There was another one of his schemes where voters were being given like 40 some odd dollars, um, for signing a petition. And mm-hmm. I saw this article in Rolling Stone that was about how many voters signed thinking that they would get their 40 some dollars. But then there was all of this like small print that they didn't Mm. read that it was like, you only get the money if you sign and you get a friend to sign. And then (laughs) some people would do that, but then they never got their money. And so they're like, is this a scam? Like, why didn't I get my money? And the answer is (laughs) yes, it is a scam. Of course it's a scam. (laughs) They're all scams. Yeah. It's just, uh, ridiculous but you know this is a campaign where the top of the ticket is a grifting con man so should we really be surprised that the con artistry is going downstream (laughs) yeah exactly well to wrap up on a story that we've been following closely here at dsr daily (laughs) the supreme court has allowed virginia to proceed with a plan to remove non-citizen voters from the rolls overriding a federal judge's ruling that reinstated 1,600 voters. Governor Glenn Youngkin hailed the decision as a victory for election integrity, while civil rights groups and the Biden administration criticize it, claiming it risks disenfranchising legal voters. The removal process targets individuals who indicated non-citizenship on DMV forms, raising concerns about eligible voters being affected. Critics argue that this ruling perpetuates unfound claims of widespread non-citizen voting. Yeah, this is a mess, and Mm. it definitely dissuades voters because if they are a citizen and they get purged from the rolls, then they have to go through the whole becoming eligible to vote process again, and they're like, that's kind of a waste of time. Like, I already did that. I mean, it's just – it's not a good thing to happen this close to the election. Yeah. And once again, for the people in the back, widespread illegal voting by non-citizens is not an an issue. It it is extremely rare because our election system is pretty good and weeds out those voters anyway. Um, So this is it's it's a solution to an issue that doesn't exist. And it's pretty clearly just trying to weed out people that want to vote. I mean, yeah, it's a Certainly flawed six, solution. Yeah. It's a yeah. very flawed solution because, like, it's not non-citizens who are being eliminated from the voter rolls. It's citizens being eliminated from the road, voter rolls. Yeah, and there's no way that all 1,600 of those voters are illegal. And no. So, you know, this, maybe, maybe if we're being generous, a couple. But in my view, that doesn't you know, the benefit of eliminating those people from the voter roll does not outweigh the 1,598 
that are also being eliminated just because yeah. of this ridiculous measure. So thank you, Supreme Court. Once again, you make a stunningly stupid decision, but can we really yeah. be surprised at this point? Ugh. Speaking of stunning stupidity, an 18-year-old Trump supporter, Caleb James Williams, faces a felony charge after allegedly threatening two Kamala Harris supporters with a machete at a Florida early voting site. Your state, Minna. Are you proud? No. Hmm. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Neptune Beach police report that Williams and a group of teenagers arrived at the scene to protest, shouting at Harris supporters until tensions escalated. Williams allegedly brandished the machete over two women ages 71 and 54 in a threatening manner. Currently held on a $55,000 bail, Williams is charged with aggravated assault on a senior, facing a possible prison sentence of 3 to 15 years. Both Democratic and Republican local leaders condemned the incident, calling for peaceful civic engagement amidst high political tensions. What a dumbass. Responding um, by saying we need peaceful civic engagement to somebody threatening two people with a machete with is a machete. Yeah. crazy, a crazy response. Threatening two old, I, you know, this is nitpicking, but I didn't realize that uh, aggravated assault on a senior was a separate charge from just regular aggravated assault. Yeah, so I didn't know that either. I've learned something new today. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is not surprising. Uh, based on the entire rhetoric of the Trump campaign, you know, this is yeah. the logical conclusion of what they've been saying and, and effort to dehumanize the opposition. So mm -hmm. I can't say that I'm shocked by this outcome. And the fact that it was a teenager, teens are idiots. Um, I know he was 18, so he is an adult. So he'll be charged as an adult. Uh, and stupidity is no excuse for the crime, but you know, mentioned that he was also with a few other teenagers. I'm curious if they will receive any kind of punishment for this as well. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine they are probably egging him on, but I don't know that for a fact. So I guess we'll see what happens, but it seems pretty cut and dry that he will face some kind of sentencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense though. Cause like the Trump campaign has been targeting young men and mm -hmm. trying to incense them or like radicalize them. Um, to get them yeah. to vote for Trump because they feel like they're living in this dystopian uh, America where everyone is out to get them. Yeah, it's really hard out here for a young white man, let me tell you. <laughs> well, my... I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. That's your famous sarcasm. Yeah, my... Your my, famous Ohio my, sarcasm. My wry, dry Ohio wit. <laughs> well, my story is almost a response story to that as a election rebuttal. day a, a re, no 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 it's a response it's <laughs> oh, a, it's not a rebuttal okay. it's kind of like these incidences are becoming more and more expected as election day approaches law enforcement officials across the united states are preparing for potential violence and intimidation related to the election process mm. in states like arizona and georgia police are implementing emergency measures and increasing training on election laws to address threats against election workers and voters the atmosphere of unrest stems from claims of election fraud, particularly those propagated by Donald Trump and his supporters, leading to heightened tension since the 2020 election. As a result, many election officials are leaving their positions due to the hostile environment, leaving some jurisdictions with inexperienced staff to oversee the critical upcoming elections. So these incidences of violence are not only increasing, but they're expected to increase. Oh, yeah leading to law enforcement officials to brush up on their election law knowledge so they can mm -hmm. protect the people who are working at the polls yeah, most effectively. I, I'm glad I don't live in one of the states where the violence is expected to be the worst. I'm also glad that I voted ahead of time and mm -hmm. simply dropped off my ballot at the library. Um, not in the book return box, but in the official box. <laughs> Fear not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this is, you know, we're in for a bumpy ride, both on election day and after, um, I think there's yeah. no, there's no question about it. Well, for sure. with one, I have one international story to close out and that is top Biden administration negotiators, including CIA director, William Burns, Middle East coordinator, Brett McGurk and envoy Amos Hochstein 
are returning to the Middle East for a last round of diplomacy before the U.S. election. Amid ongoing Israeli conflicts with Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon, the U.S. officials aim to promote, quote, de-escalation backed by deterrence, end quote, but hold limited hope for an immediate ceasefire. Burns expected to meet with Egyptian officials to discuss a possible hostage for ceasefire arrangement with a focus on the release of hostages held in Gaza. Although a draft plan for a temporary ceasefire and hostage exchange has surfaced, officials are skeptical about its acceptance given rejections from Hamas and internal Israeli resistance to any pre-election commitments. Yeah, I mean, don't hold your breath. You know, they've been working around the clock on this for months. Uh, Well, I guess now, over a year probably. Um, So I'm not confident that anything is going to be done before the election. Um, Mm, That would be incredible. Obviously, we all hope for something, uh, for a ceasefire. But it seems like it's not coming until after the election, if at all, which is Mm -hmm. a shame. But that's kind of been, I think the writing has been on the wall for that to be the case for some time. So, you know, I appreciate that the administration is still trying, uh, sending everybody at once (laughs) to try and figure this out. But I don't think i think it's kind of a non-starter right now which is a shame well that is all the news we have for you today but we have another dsr coming out later today with some final predictions before the election because in case you forgot it's only a couple days away fun times can't wait very excited but before you know we stress about the election Unwind, have some fun this Halloween, but not too much fun. May, you know, have your parties this weekend. It's the calm before the storm. It's very we true. All, we all need to unwind a little bit. Uh, so let your hair down because I can't. But have fun. <laughs> all right. Well, until tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>